Hey there friends, Martin here for cgboost.com and today let me talk a little about, yes, underwater environments and how to polish up the volumetric effects that are very much needed for such scenes. Now I'm sure you've noticed that the topic of our latest CG challenge is underwater worlds. So it may be a very topical tutorial for many of you and if you haven't joined our challenge you can watch Zach talk about it right here. So, what does make a good looking underwater environment? Well, apart from the actual environment, the vegetation, fish and whales, submarines and all the other stuff you might decide to place there, it is mainly the bright caustic highlights we all love, combined with dark and murky areas. Plus, bubbles, light streaks and particles of all sorts. In this video, I'll give you a few tips concerning the volumetric related topics, all aimed at very fast results. One thing I do recommend is to figure out the volumetrics for your environments first, since they influence the look of your scene so much, including what is and what is not visible. Good thing is, this is now so much faster than it used to be, thanks to Eevee. So here I have a simple block out of my scene that I started with and will be adding our volumetric elements in here. To start off, you just add a cube or a sphere to your scene, something that spans it whole, Switch it to wireframe view in here that helps you see the scene in the viewport. With the cube selected create a material and add a principled volume shader, plug it into volume and you can get rid of the PSDF shader. Then add an absorption volume shader and combine it with the principled volume by holding down Ctrl, Shift and right mouse drag to create this network. At this point it doesn't look like much but we'll start playing with the values here. But before that, I actually recommend hitting Ctrl A and applying all the transforms of your volume object and also naming it volume. A little note, you can also create this shader in your world material, but it doesn't allow you to have as much control over it as when you add various volume objects in the scene. So that's why I generally like to go the volume object route. In this material, you focus mainly on the density of your water here and here and don't be afraid of going low with it, depending on the size of your volume object. You can make the mix of about 0.3 so that the absorption is not that intense. Then I suggest turning the anisotropy to something like 0.5. It will make the light scattering behave a bit more believable. But we can't see much as it is because we have no light in the scene. Let's quickly add a very strong spotlight up here. Make it shine from above and increase the power a lot. There, immediately we get this beautiful volumetric cone of light. By the way, why spotlight you ask? Well, simply because it takes up the least amount of performance, which is always handy. And then it's all about playing around with the colors of the volume, depending on how blue or greenish you want your scene to be. These cyan colors work for me, but you can go, for example, with more of a green color for the absorption. Boom, here you go. And of course you can also color the spotlight. Now even though Blender has improved by leaps and bounds in the speed of rendering of all sorts of elements, including volumetrics, the real-time nature of EV still wins the day for me. You basically get very convincing light scattering effects in real time. So for this competition I do suggest using this power for your underwater environments rather than relying on cycles. So now that we have this volume ready, we want to achieve these wonderful light streaks scattering through the liquid. Well, this is best done in combination with light sources and shadow planes. Making a shadow plane and having it cast shadows on your scene is a big part of my Master 3D Environments in Blender course. So check it out for many more examples of this. For now, let's just quickly make a plane below our light, place it up here and add a material to it. Now we can see it is casting a solid shadow so let's change it by punching some holes into the alpha of the plane. In my course, I've often used a simple noise texture plugged into the alpha channel for this sort of thing. Let me first jump into the material settings here because unless you set these to alpha blend for the opacity and alpha hashed for the shadows, you won't get any transparency in Eevee. So where were we? Ah, yes, the noise texture. Well, this is all well and good for cloud shadows, but underwater shadows, or rather caustics caused by refraction of light, look a little different. Now, I don't think we need to achieve exactly the same shapes like we see on these images, but something closer than a noise texture would be nice. Fortunately, we have this wonderful Voronoi texture built into Blender. 
Let me plug it into the alpha instead. And all we need to do now is to invert it so that the white spots are transparent instead. To do that, bring out a color ramp node, flip it and then play around with the edge points to get slightly better contrasts. There. Of course the quality of our shadows is abysmal now, but we can make it better by increasing this cube size value here in the shadows and maybe even making it soft and high quality. If your computer allows that is. Otherwise, make the quality lower for the viewport and only crank this up for the final render. This structure of the shapes is a bit too regular for me, so I've gotten into a habit of randomizing it ever so slightly with this trick. You hit Ctrl T to add this mapping network to the Voronoi texture, which gives you control over the coordinates by which the texture is placed onto your object. Now what you can do is mix in a little bit of irregularity into these coordinates by quite literally mixing in noise into this. A default one with a very slight mix of 0.1 distorts the coordinates of the Voronoi enough to make it look less regular. You can see that if I go over 0.1 it makes it too distorted, making it lose that caustic like structure we want, so I don't recommend it. Already you can see these lovely streaks of light going through our scene. Most of you will probably make a still render, but if you ever want to make your streaks move, the easiest way is this. You just change your Voronoi vector type to 4D, which gives you this W value. This one you can simply keyframe in time for your noise to evolve and change shape, giving us this beautiful streak movement. How cool is that? Nevertheless. Be very careful with the value here, you will have to go by really low increments to achieve the slow movement of the streaks. In my case it was a 0 to 0 0.6 value change over 250 frames. Don't forget to make the animation linear of course, so that it doesn't speed up or down. And now feel free to experiment with the positioning and the power of your light. I recommend pushing it a little higher so that the streaks are a little bit more perpendicular and also increasing the blend value here to make the spot shape softer. Mess around with the position and the scale of the shadows as well and you can change their scale here. The color ramp then controls the contrasts of your streaks and how much light is let in. Another great trick to make your underwater scenes look a little bit more underwatery is to add some bloom to it. You will probably have to tailor the settings to your scene, but I usually start with lowering the threshold and increasing the intensity and playing around with the radius. And when you're done, it should add this soft feel to your light. And you can even change the color of the glow. Of course, you can do this in the post-production, but I sometimes like to render my scenes already with this effect present because it adds a lot to the overall atmosphere. To improve upon the rendering results of your shadows, I already mentioned this menu here, where you can increase the size of the shadow maps, making it more detailed and also activate these two settings here. There is however also this volumetrics menu. Usually for clouds and such, I would recommend turning on volumetric shadows here, but for underwater environments, this usually deactivates or lowers the intensity of our streaks, so we don't really need it. What I do recommend, if your volumetric area is a bit grainy, is to lower this tile size to 4 pixels. Going lower is usually an overkill, so 4 pixels is a nice balance I'd say. Also you can increase the samples, or if you want to have a precise control over how far or how near the volume is visible, just play with these values here. There is one post-production effect I recommend for these sorts of scenes. Let me jump here into the compositor and if you've never worked with it, you can actually watch my introduction to compositing in Blender for free here on YouTube. Basically, what happens here, Blender will render your image and then whatever effect you place after this render node will be applied onto the rendered image before it being saved onto your disk. So in our case, let's give this a quick render and then open it up as a backdrop of your compositor here by adding a viewer node and plugging the image output in it as well. If you have Node Wrangler add-on active, you can even add a reroute like this and then plug it from this point to both output nodes. The node I am looking for is this lens distortion one and here we will use this dispersion at a value of 0.02. Don't go higher unless you want to overdo this effect. You can see it gives us this nice chromatic aberration and a little unwanted line here at the edges. So to get rid of this, just check this fit option. 
this effect kind of supports the underwater feel we're after. So feel free to use it, but please go easy on it. If, despite my warning of higher render times, you still decide to use cycles for these underwater environments, you will probably notice there are dissimilarities when you switch between the renders. Let's give it a go, and usually the first step is to switch to GPU to make everything render faster, and then I go to shader editor to lower the density of the volume here, and the absorption shader density as well, to bring it a little closer to the EV look. Sometimes I increase the light power as well, and usually that's all what's needed to achieve somewhat similar look. But yeah, you will probably have to play around and experiment on your lights and the volume in your scene to make it even closer. In my experience, you will need to go about 4000 samples to get rid of noise in your volumetrics. Longer render times are of course not that terrible for still renders, but if you're thinking in terms of animations, that quickly becomes a problem. Fortunately, Blender 3.0 and above versions have the super fast Cycles, Cycles X built into it with optics denoising and noise threshold option, so that speeds things up considerably. And admittedly, it is true that the ray trace renders give better results, at least when it comes to light bouncing. So decide for yourself. For my short film, I actually have a solution on how to combine Cycles render and EV volumetrics into a single shot. So to learn about it, you can watch this tutorial on my own channel. Link is of course in the description. In my personal test scene, I've added a number of elements, like these bubbles, fish buoys, and some little specks floating around, which is unfortunately outside the scope of this volumetric focus tutorial. No worries though, I have included these as separate elements for you to use in our free resources section. Just subscribe here and you will have access to these and many other elements connected to our various tutorials and courses. And if you're interested in more environments and some water elements, including these stormy waves, you can check out the Master 3D Environments in Blender course. I go step by step building all these environments in there. So I hope this quick video focused on volumetrics will help you when making your underwater scenes and possibly your CG challenge entries. And with that, let me wish you good luck and hopefully see you in our future live stream where we'll comment on some of the final entries. Until then, stay creative my friends, Martin out.